In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use AI tools to create PBR materials for 3D rendering. If you're an artist on social media, you've seen a huge influx of AI generated art, and I want to show you how to use that to speed up your process and make some really cool stuff. It's great for generating concepts, it's great for doing iterations in the middle of a project, and it's great for processes that used to be impossible, like upresing a low res image. One thing it's not great at yet is uh, faces. <laughs> Today though, I'm gonna be focusing on texturing and how you can use Midjourney to create a really quick library of materials for yourself. And I'm not just talking about color textures, I mean full PBR materials with roughness and normal map and all that stuff. Now there are a lot of AI programs out there for you to get into. Some of them are even on your phone like Wombo, but today I'm gonna be using Midjourney. At the time we're recording this video, Midjourney is still in beta, so you have to sign up and wait for an invite. Or if you know someone who's already in, they can uh, generate an invite link for you. So once you're in, you're gonna see a ton of crazy art from other users just scrolling up the page, but don't panic. It's basically a Discord bot, and it's actually super easy to use. Let me show you how to do it. So you're gonna to wanna to go over to one of these newbie channels, and what you do is you type slash imagine, and then just in plain English, you type the image that you wanna see. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna type slash imagine production crate logo. So what Midjourney is gonna do for you is it's gonna generate four different variations at a low resolution of what it thinks you wanna see. So once it generates the low resolution thumbnails, you can have a few options here. So we could either run it again by clicking this little refresh button. If there's one we like, but we wanna see a few changes, we could click on variation. So let's say I want a variation of number two here. And let's say I really like this first one, but I wanna upscale it. I'm gonna click upscale one. If you scroll down, you can see it's working on those variations for me. All right, so finish those variations and you can see it gave me some different font choices. If you're not getting the results you want, try different search terms and sit back and watch what other people are typing and the results they're getting and kind of take some of their search terms. You can even create variations and upscale other people's images as they're scrolling by. Now, when you upscale an image, it's gonna upscale it and if you still like it, you can click it one more time to upscale it to max. So let's try that, upscale to max. All right, it's done. I never promised it would look good. We're probably not gonna switch our logo to this, but you get the idea. All right, let's get to what we were actually focusing on, which is textures. So since we're focusing on textures, a couple search terms that I found help create the results I'm looking for is to use the terms seamless texture or tiling texture or something like that. And that will help it ensure that it's gonna be straight on and evenly lit. So let's try that. I'm gonna search for imagine tree bark seamless texture. It's kind of vague, but let's just see what it gives us. If we don't get the results we want, we can keep adding terms until we get what we want. When you get into the mid-journey beta, if you find any cool search terms that give you awesome results, tag us on Instagram with it or post it on our Discord. Okay, so it actually generated four really nice, flat, evenly lit bark textures. I like this dark one here, and at this point I could ask for some variations on it, but I think it's actually ready to go, so I'm just gonna hit upscale. All right, what's really cool about this is you can see it doesn't just upscale the image that you clicked on, it actually sometimes adds adds more variation to it because the AI is figuring things out all over again. I like it, so I'm gonna upscale to max now. And it's done. So again, it doesn't just upscale the image that was there in the thumbnail, it adds more details that weren't there, which is awesome. Okay, it's done. This is as high res as I can get it using Midjourney, uh, but this actually highlights one of the limitations currently in AI generated art. A lot of these apps and programs, they don't give you a huge HD image. You can actually use other AI programs to upscale images like I mentioned. This one here I think looks better before I upscale it. So I'm just gonna leave it as is and we're gonna process it in a Substance Sampler now. So I spent a few hours just kind of playing around with Midjourney and I came up with a bunch of different images here and I'm gonna bring them now into Substance Sampler and see if I can create some cool materials for them. So the first thing you wanna do is open up Substance Sampler and you wanna drag and drop your image right here into the layer palette on the right. Now when you drop an image into here, it's gonna ask you for a few options. Uh, what, what do you wanna do with the image? So I'm gonna choose this first option, image to material, AI powered. So it's processing and after a few seconds, you can see that Substance Sampler actually just spits out a finished material with color map, normal map, height map, roughness, metallic map, all the good stuff. Looks like we looked at with this, it looks pretty good, but chances are about 50-50, it might not look right. So I'm gonna show you how to fix it up if you run into any problems. We actually did a longer video just on this program. Go ahead and watch the video here if you didn't see it, but I'll recap the essential details for you really quick. First thing you wanna do is go over here to the image to material AI powered layer and you can actually mess with the height information. So let's say you have too many small high frequency bumps, you can actually turn down the micro details and it's gonna keep the big forms and the medium forms, but it'll smooth out the noisy small textures. Now, if you want the opposite, you wanna keep the small micro details, but you don't want the big forms, you can actually turn down the large detail slider. Play around with this and try to get the best result that you can possibly get. 
I also highly recommend that you go down to the roughness sliders and play around with that because from a single image, the computer can't actually tell how shiny something is supposed to be. So you're gonna have to dial this in yourself. If I wanted to make wet tree bark, I could turn the base value of the roughness way down and now it looks shiny and wet. Obviously that's not really appropriate for what we're trying to make here with tree bark. So I'll just turn that up. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is you probably wanna make it tile. Not every material has to tile, but for this, I wanna be able to make just an entire tree trunk with it. So I need it to tile vertically and ideally horizontally too. So I'm gonna click here to add layer and I'm gonna search for tiling, okay? Pops up this window on the side. We can actually use this cropping box here to try to force the image to tile. So if I zoom in right here, I can see this is like kind of a harsh line where it's tiling improperly. So I can move this around and try to adjust it until it looks better. So I'm checking the top, checking the bottom to make sure it looks right. Now it's not gonna be perfect after just doing that, but I kind of generally just want those lines to flow into each other across that tiling line. Notice that the colors don't quite match and it still looks a little bit harsh. So we have some other tools we can use to make that look better. If I go to the edge menu here, I can adjust the blur slider to kind of soften that border. You can also adjust the threshold and the grid resolution sliders up and down to sort of change the noise pattern, the sort of breakup between the different sections. Once you have it tiling, if you have some color issues where you're seeing splotches of color just repeating in every direction and it's very noticeable, we can try an optional layer here called Equalize. And what this will do is it's gonna to try to average out the colors and the height information to sort of make everything even across the whole material. Now, if you're too heavy handed with this, it's just gonna erase all your details. So for example, if I turn radius all the way down, you can see it basically turns into nothing. Use this slider wisely, but it will try to average out any inconsistency in the color across the material and sort of blend it together, especially if you have a gradient from light to dark, going from top to bottom or something, it'll try to even out the whole material. So now that those essential steps are out of the way, all that's left to do is kind of just have fun. Add details, add weathering, add imperfections to the material. So I recommend you go over here to the Assets button and just kind of search through what they have. They have tons of options for customizing your materials. For example, on this tree, maybe it has moss. Let me just search for moss. There we go. I'm just gonna add moss to my tree. One click and it's done. Obviously you can adjust the settings over here on the left. Maybe it's too much moss. You can change the color of the moss. So with a single click, you can turn things into a brick pattern, a floor tile pattern. You can add cracks, you can add snow, you can add dirt, mud. My favorite one is probably the water filter. You can actually just add puddles to your ground materials and it looks so realistic, it's really cool. Okay, so once you're happy with it, it's time to save it and export it. So I'm just gonna click here and rename this to Bark and make sure you save it. Notice it even generates a really cool thumbnail for you. So to save it for other programs where you can actually use it on your projects, you go over here to the share button on the right and I'm gonna click export as. Now, if you wanna use this in Substance Painter to paint it onto your models, right here where it says format, you wanna save it as a Substance 3D file, SBSAR, and then point it where you want it to go and export. If you wanna save this for any other program like Maya or Blender or Unreal Engine, then you wanna save it as a PNG. So I'll choose PNG, point it where I want it to go, and I'll name it Bark2 and export. And you can see over here, there's a render queue. It's generating my maps for me. So I was actually able to create a whole bunch of materials using those images I generated of around mid-journey. And we're putting it up on RenderCrate for free. So if you don't already have an account, go ahead and sign up and go snag them. So like this video and subscribe if you wanna see more experiments like this in the future. And if you make anything cool with these materials, go ahead and tag us on Instagram with it or post it on our Discord. And if you play around with any of these AI tools and you come up with some really cool prompts, be sure to leave them in the comments. All right, later creators.